Well, hello there, it's me, Uncle Hammy, reviewing this, the 2023 Raw Mantis. Yes, Raw. Raw. Now that is a word for my emo phase I'd never thought I'd hear again, but it's back and in the most unexpected fashion possible. For the five of you that watch my channel, you will remember that I test rode the prototype version of this bike a few months ago. So this is the all new customer version. They've added a lot of new stuff to this bike. Silver is a new color that they're offering. I love how this bike looks in silver. I also have an affiliate link down below if you wanna buy one of these bikes, which would be nice. That way you support the channel, I get a little commission and I'll finally get to eat. <laughs> So what do you need to know? Raw is a brand new manufacturer that is based out of LA and the Mantis is their debut bike. This is a 60 volt ultra lightweight electric dirt bike that's designed to compete with the likes of the Soren Lightbe. Raw aims to set themselves apart, however, by heavily focusing on customer service and build quality. Think of the Mantis as a small electric dual sport motorcycle instead of a roided up mountain bike like the Suron. So let's talk about the specs. The Mantis comes with a 60 volt, 35 amp hour battery, which is paired up with a 5,000 watt chain driven motor. This motor peaks at around 7,500 watts, which makes the Mantis a very determined bike when it comes to climbing hills. And with its two second zero to 30 time, it blows away the competition when it comes to acceleration. Its top speed is pretty impressive as well, maxing out at around 50 mile an hour right out of the box. The Mantis comes with four riding modes, including Sport, Eco 1, Eco 2, and Eco 3. It also features a very useful reverse mode. And finally, the Mantis is gonna cost around 5,000 US dollars. If you want some more detail, I have the full spec list in the description. So what else does the Mantis have to offer? Now, one of the safety features on the Mantis is called Park Mode. And what that basically is, is like neutral on a normal motorcycle. So when it says P, that means you're in park. What you're gonna do next is select which mode you want, Sport, Eco, 1, 2, or 3, and then you wanna pull the front brake right here. It'll say ready, and then you're good to go. Now the point of that is to prevent people from just twisting the throttle randomly while it's turned on and looping it inside the garage, embarrassing you in front of the whole family. You'll also notice some headlights and indicators over here. This is for the road going version of the Mantis, which will be coming out fairly soon. Another detail about the RAR is that it has RAR written absolutely everywhere on the bike. Right here, right here, down there, there, here again, right there, here, here, here. You will definitely not confuse this thing for a Hitachi rice maker. They really put RAR on this bike more times than I drew that weird S in my middle school notebook. But apart from that small detail, I love how the Mantis looks. However, I will say the rear fender and seat do look a bit odd. The front part of the seat in particular looks like it should have a function, but I couldn't figure out what it would be for. I thought it could be used to seat a passenger. Are you enjoying this as much as I am? But that certainly wasn't it. You can sit there when taking tight turns off road. I did find it helpful for cornering, but overall, I think you're standard banana shaped seat would just be better all around. The rear fender is a little awkward as well. It's just a bit long for the rest of the proportions of the bike. I really think they should shorten that up a bit. But apart from those two things, I really think they nailed the aesthetics, especially that swing arm. So what is the Mantis like to ride? All right then, gonna go up my little test trail again and see how it does. First thing you'll notice when you hop on the RAR is that it does have a ton of torque. <coughs> very fast, very responsive bike, especially in sport mode. It is truly exciting. And in eco mode, in eco 3, it's also pretty good. I actually like eco 3 mode a lot. I found myself using it more than I thought I would. Another thing I like is the seat height. I'm about 5'10", 5'11", 155 pounds, so this bike is a nice size for me. But their ideal market, Rara's ideal target uh, customer, is taller, heavier riders. So if you're about 6'2", 190 pounds, this is definitely the bike I'd be looking into. Another thing I like about the RAR is how it sounds, actually. I never thought I'd say that about an electric vehicle, but it does sound really good. Kind of sounds like a high-pitched rally car. Here we go, let's get a bit of speed going on here. Oh, soft dirt. I forgot how soft this is. Woo! Got low side. Nice. Another thing I like about the RAR, and as you're gonna see right here, is that the suspension it's pretty good as well. It's not bad for factory, quite absorbent. You can make it very soft, make it very firm. Yeah, it's a nice quality stock suspension they have here. So far, so good. The RAR feels like a solid, well-made bike with plenty of power. And while it does have a few issues, which I'll get to later, 
The overall experience is positive. I spent most of my time riding this bike off-road, but in my opinion, the Mantis really feels at home on the tarmac, especially with its current running position. Thankfully, they are making a supermoto version of the Mantis, as well as a 72 volt package. Now that would be a fantastic combination. As I'm one of the first people to test this bike, I wanted to get some other people's opinions. So I reached out to a local Sauron group and suggested a group ride on an upcoming Saturday. The day had come, and I was deeply afraid that no one was going to show up. And... No one did. Kind of bummed out, man. This is really reminding me of my 8th grade birthday party. Oh, uh, maybe we can just go up and harass some strangers. Maybe we'll get them to ride the bike. I'm good at harassing strangers. That's why I have three restraining orders. The first person we harassed was an elderly man who was very intrigued by the Mantis but had no interest in riding it as it was a bit too tall for him. So after a bit of adventuring and a near front end collision with a jeep, we finally found a couple dirt bike riders who were willing to give it a go. <laughs> Just like that. that yeah, it feels really good. You like that? Yeah, the suspension is really good on this. I've ridden a few Surons and uh, the suspension on this feels just as good, if not better. Right. I notice if I hit this, it cuts the throttle. Well, yeah. You, you can stop that. You can get rid of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's something that I would definitely, that's a gripe I would have, but besides that, it, it feels great. The Mantis certainly has quite a few good things going for it. It looks great, it's fast as hell, stock suspension is pretty decent, and it's a nice height and size for taller riders. However, it does have a couple of shortcomings. One of the main issues I do have with the RAR, however, is the front end handling when you're riding off road. I really don't feel much confidence in it. It feels very nervous, like it's gonna um, fall out from underneath me at any second. If I own this bike, I would definitely be adding some higher rises on the handlebars because I think the reason why the front is so nervous is because of your position and also maybe the rake angle of the fork. I think both of those would fix the problem with the handling on this bike. Another issue I found with the RAR was brake fade actually. I think they need to upgrade the brakes on this for the extra weight on this bike. It does weigh about 150 pounds, whereas the Suron weighs about 120. <laughs> Still a ton of fun though, man. I really enjoyed riding this. Once you get used to the handling, it, uh, it does become a lot better. But as of right now, that's what I think. Also, if you spend a lot of time riding in sport mode, you are gonna notice the range will drain pretty quickly. That again, I think is because of the weight. They do plan on making a 72 volt version of this bike. And I think that will be fantastic. That's when you'll see the RAR really come alive. And the final issue I really have with this bike is the throttle response in sport mode. When you're at say maybe 20%, 15, 20%, it'll kind of decide if it wants to give you power or not. And that can make more technical riding pretty difficult. So that's one thing that needs adjustment. Keep in mind that this is Rara's first bike and um, obviously some refinements will be needed. But as far as the first attempt goes, it's pretty good. It stands out from the pack. It has a unique feel, a unique ride. And as far as a brand goes, I really like RAR. I like what they're doing. They really want to make a good bike and they're open to criticism, they're open to honesty. And yeah, I'm just being honest with you guys. Now I've already given this feedback to RAR and they've come up with a few solutions. The throttle response issue has apparently already been fixed and they will add some extra rises for the handlebars along with your order. They also plan on upgrading the brakes as soon as possible. It is nice to see a manufacturer take feedback seriously and I'm looking forward to seeing their progress. In summary, the Mantis is a fast, quality bike that is backed by a full customer support team. However, its unpredictable off-road handling and disappointing range in sport mode are things to consider. Overall, I really enjoyed my time with the Mantis, and I'm excited to test out the Supermoto and 72 volt versions coming out soon. Okay, that is it for this week's review. I do have a few more coming out over the next month or so, which is super exciting. Got some great bikes coming. And yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you all next time.